Hello, this is Nate's Studio Desk. Today we're going to go over architecture diagrams. This is a diagram I did very quickly and very easy using Rhino, Illustrator, and Photoshop. So to begin with, step one is type in named view. That will bring up this dialog and you will want to save this view. So we'll do parallel, call that render. Now, in case we move something around, what this allows is we can just click on this and we'll come back to that view. Step two will be creating the line work. We can select the objects that we want to make a diagram out of and type in make 2D. And here there are a couple different options. We want to make sure hidden lines are not on. Press OK and then you will see that they show up in the 2D version. I recommend if you have a complicated model to remodel your, your building or your architecture diagram in a, very easily so that when you press make 2D, it's not a bunch of complicated line work. And that way you can keep the diagram very simple, straightforward. You don't wanna make it over complicated and try to communicate too much in one given diagram. So we have the line work and I will select it, go file, export, selected, and then I will make sure that the file type is an Illustrator file type. And I'll do diagram three, cause I have that, or line two actually, line two. Save. And then this is important here, preserve model scale. We do wanna preserve model scale. Usually I don't do one foot equals an inch, but how I model this, it was a little, I was not paying attention to units, but let's say you wanted to an eighth of an inch, 16th or 32nd, I would just type in here one eighth, and that would give me the eighth inch scale or the 16th inch scale to get that. So for now, I'll just gonna do one foot equals one inch. And there are options, hatches exported as solid fills, Typically, I turn that off. Okay, so we'll press save. Okay, so we'll come back to that. We're gonna go back to our parallel render. You'll notice these almost look like they're floating around. And so what I'm gonna do is create planar surface. I'm gonna create a base that these cubes can sit on and that way it will give me a nice shadow on the ground. And again, it's nice that I have the named the named C plane, the named views cuz I can just double click on this and it will um, give me the view again. Okay. So, now I'm going to go file and this time instead of doing export selected, I'm going to go file print. And I'm going to make sure that the same scale is on, so one inch equals a foot, or you can come down here and change it to the scale that you're working in. And I like to do the raster input. If you do vector, you'll see that the, the line work comes through, which can be annoying because it shows the invisible lines. So here we'll do raster, and depending on how you have your settings in Rhino, for right now we'll just do print color, and we will press print. Okay, the next step is if you like, you can also do different views like technical view can be very nice as an additional layer to, to add in. Also pen, which sometimes takes a second to render. And what's nice, and that gives you this, see how this is sort of darker around the edges. That's additional information that you can layer in that enhances your diagram. You can always come in here too and do file prop, not notes, file properties and come into these views and change the different set settings. So let's say pen view, maybe I want my objects to be a different color and I could come in here and change, you know, right now it has the control so you can do the different settings here. So another one is 
uh, retraced actually can look really nice. It takes a long time for it to print. And the last time that I was using it, it, uh, it crashed on me. So for this tutorial, I won't do it, but I recommend having this as an additional layer. It gives some really nice light. Another thing, let's see, let's do artistic. Artistic's another view. Another thing you might want to keep in mind is the sun view and that will change especially when you're doing the rendered view right now I don't have a Sun but let's say you want a particular angle you can control that in here and also change the lights so we'll just go for now and you can adjust the angle if you need something that is angle specific where you want the shade to be in a certain location so that's that's a nice additional control factor of how those those shadows show up and you can add additional lights as well if that's not what you're looking for you can do manual control and change the different the different angles there so that can be nice one last thing back in the settings properties in this rendered view it will show shadows and you can change the settings so if you if you want max blurring you know you you want you know if you want to really always cast shadows you can change those settings and it will give you different effects so just mess around with those and until you get to the desired effect okay so step four open illustrator so here i already have the the document open because i was practicing before i started but let, we'll do it like we do it normally so diagram line two open this and right away, this is really awesome. It's already, I don't have to explode it or anything. It's automatically line work. And we can see that this hatch fill didn't really come through here. Uh, that's fine. I thought it was gonna come through as a solid. But let's say I want to adjust this. I can come in here and do right click, join, and then give it the color that I want for my particular diagram. And then already you have sort of that, that diagram look to it. Now you can do your whole diagram in Illustrator and that is completely fine, especially if you're more comfortable using Illustrator. But what I like to do is go between the programs. I, I like using uh, both Illustrator and Photoshop at the same time. Here we'll, I just control copied and we can do a arrow that's on the front end i guess so none on the back end let's do an arrow come here arrow 11 is always nice and you can change how big you want that arrow if you want to individually adjust the perspective of the arrow or have more uh manipulability to be able to manipulate it easier, you can come up to edit, or is it object? Yes, object, expand appearance. And when you do that, when you press the this white arrow tool, you can come in and adjust the arrow however you want. So that that's really nice. Uh, and so sometimes you want your arrow in perspective and you can kind of just make minor adjustments for for that, to adjust that. Okay, so now we will jump over to Photoshop, and this is a really nice workflow. It works for a lot of things. Illustrator does lines really well, and Photoshop does textures and layers really well, and, and doing um, effects. Everything you can do in Illustrator, everything you can do in Photoshop, you can do in Illustrator. It's just a little bit more intuitive, and if you already know Photoshop, it's just a quicker workflow, and I really like saving the line work and changing the line work in Illustrator and then when I'm in Photoshop doing textures and layers and that sort of thing. I'm going to open my diagram shade, come up here, file, Photoshop, place, linked, and diagram line two, place it. Here we go, open, and then drag and drop, have it line up. So I'll make a new group and then right here I can do the mask layer and then underneath that I'll come in and I can do a color. I could do a solid color and do, you know, whatever color you want. Let's make it orange. 
the reason why I like this is because it gives you control on the opacity and you can change it really easily and you're going to want to go and be able to manipulate just this roof and so it's always good to have it in groups so we'll have roof and then we'll have I'll make another folder for walls and then I'll come back and select the line work for my walls you know maybe we keep I want to keep like this but then I want this to be sort of all one color, not this face. And I'll go select walls and then I do this, which is the add layer mask. And it will make that selection there. Now, whatever I put on that layer, it will show up only under that. So I'll do another color, solid color. You could do a brush too. It's really up to you how you like to do it. Or you could do a gradient. Let's do yellow maybe in yellow and maybe like a pink I don't know and a pink so there we go and you notice how the line work is getting a little bit uh, grayed out you can always come and drag this up and so the line work will pop up on top and that might just be a display issue Okay, so that is how you can do that. And so now when you go back to Illustrator, this is what's great about the link. Let's say I want to get rid of this color because I'm going to do the Photoshop in, I'm going to do that color in Photoshop. I come in here, I press File, Save. And then when I go to the Photoshop file, it updates it. Now some people do the whole diagram in Photoshop, the whole diagram in Illustrator. But if you start getting used to this workflow, I, I really think you're going to start like start liking it. And using folders and masks are a really easy way. So now when I want to put in some texture, I can come into my, my texture layer. I go File, Open, and let's go to my Textures, Photoshop Resources, and I open up a texture. And I can just copy and paste and I'll know, okay, that whole thing is going to be in that texture. So I need to find where that is. There it is. And so I can just put that in there. And it's showing up really nicely. And I'll just turn on the, the opacity and it gives it just a little bit of a grunge texture. Let's say I want to put a texture on the bottom layer to kind of make a what would you consider like the ground plane and I'll go back to my diagram layer I'll make a new folder folder and layer mask and I'll come in and just open any old texture really doesn't matter it really depends on you know what what style what preference you're going for and I'll put texture And let's see, let's see if I have that in my group. And then I'll just turn it down a lot because that's a little, that's very overwhelming. You can maybe give it like a paper texture to kind of pretend like it, it's like that. So that's that's really the, the essence. And I think after that, you know, after so, sort of seeing the workflow and the work process, you can apply that to whatever you're going for, whatever style and type of diagram you want. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and let me know if you want any to see any other videos. Thank you. Have a good day.